Time to get cracking with this bad boy. Hey guys, welcome back to Tamiya Legends and once again, thank you for stopping by. So as I just said, it's time to get cracking with the Monster Beetle. Very excited about this build, but before we get cracking, um, this video is sponsored by Yoro RC. Um, I'll put a link in the description to their website. They do all things RC related and obviously Tamiya. They've also kindly given us um, a 5% discount pro promo code, which will be in the description as well, and that's valid until the end of the year. Yoro RC can be found on all the major social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube, and obviously that um, superb website of theirs. So a massive personal thank you from me to Yoro RC for sending me this bad boy to build and run. And uh, yeah, please check them out. Okay, so in today's video, we want to get this bad boy built. Um, so it'll be a full chassis build, including all the electrics going into it and getting it all working. If we can fit the shell in this video, we will, but I very much doubt it because it's a hard body shell. There's a fair bit of detail on it, so that might be for a video after. But um, as I'm making this video, I'm in a little bit of a rush to get it built, shell finished, and get it running outside before the snow comes because um, I want to do a couple of running videos with it, so we're up against it slightly. So let's get cracking with the chassis. So before we get into it, um, as I say, we are fitting the electrics. Um, it's going to be pretty much bog standard kit, although um, it will be fully ball raced, so I'll just take this opportunity to give uh, my buddy Happy RC a shout out. He supplies all my bearings. Um, top guy, can't thank him enough. Um, but on also, instead of using a kit 540 motor, I'm going to be going with um, a sports tuned. Um, this is a vintage one actually, but it runs really well. I just think it might just give it that little bit of extra oomph on um, on 2S. Um, bog standard um, TBLE or 2 speedo we'll use, and a tactic. Um, well, I'll use my 2.4 tactic radio gear. Um, Possibly I'll go antennas, antenna list receiver just because it's easy. Right, let's get building. So I've just quickly separated the stuff we won't be using. So obviously the body set, wheels, tyres, chrome bits, and uh, I'll throw the decals in there as well. Because um, that's going to be quite an involved video on its own. Right, that's everything out that we need. Taking it all out of plastic bags. Not done the part bags yet. Um, I'll, do, I'll get some tubs for those now. Um, as I say, electrics are there. I need to dig a servo out, which I'm going to have to do quite soon, actually, because that goes in early doors. But, um, yeah, step one, charge your battery. Don't have to worry about that today. Step two is putting the um, two, shy, two sides of the chassis together. And obviously this is a Monster Beetle, so it's the um, ORV chassis, which is an absolutely legendary design. ORV stands for Off-Road Vehicle, in case you were wondering. Right, let's go. Right, that's stage two complete, which as I said is just bolting the two sides of the chassis together. So the bumper sits in, there's two um, metal brackets that go on the inside of that, one with a hex at the side to locate it. So that's loose at the moment. Um, strengthening bar for your radio gear goes in, metal bar goes across there. Um, and then there's this, this bit here, so there's... Um, two screws there and a screw there to hold it together and at the same time you put the, um, the battery door in but before you do that you have to put this um, foam tape on which will just compress the battery for a tighter fit um, so that's that one so let's get on to stage three so I just thought I'd show you this quickly um, I used to just use big numb side cutters to on the parts trees to you know take the bits off and then you'd have to use a craft knife to um, get the pips off but massive shout out to Peter. When I did the um, Barnyard RC track day with him, he was using these. Now he's ground them down at the top, as you can see, so it gets right in on the part trees. And the beauty of that is, um, when you cut, you get right into the plastic and there's only a tiny bit left instead of a big pip and you're having to force the knife to cut it off. So it gets in really close and then just go over it very gently, quick, carefully with a knife and it's gone. So um, yeah, if, you're, um, if you've got a pair of these and you've got access to a, gr a grinder to, to just take the front end down a bit, really, that really does save a little bit of time and uh, makes things a lot easier. So if you're watching, Peter, thank you, buddy. Right, that's step three done. So the metal front brackets are on either side and the two plastic um, suspension shock mounts because the shocks go across and at the same time i'll just put the switch plate on because um, we'll, we'll we'll mount the switch properly 
So that's three. So stage four, we've got to dig the speedo out and uh, a steering servo and get those mounted in the um, TBLE or 2S actually just gets sticky tape to the side of the servo and then goes in. So we don't have to center the servo just yet because we're not connecting it. So we can get that mounted. And that's step five completed. So, um, yeah, so obviously if speedo's taped to the servo, servo servo's now bolted in. The eagle eye of you might have noticed I didn't put the black um, second bracket in for the servo support because I'm a dumbass. So anyway, that was easy to get in. Um, the second metal bar's in place now. Switch is now in place and the receiver goes in. All this happens at the same time. Um, just put a couple of tie wraps on the wiring of uh, the servo wires and the speedo wires just to keep them out of the way. I may change that at a later date. And then obviously we've got the um, motor wires and battery wires. I have powered it up and centered the servo, um, but we'll probably end up doing that again. So next stage is stage six, where it's the um, servo server and steering linkages. So yeah, let's get that built. Right, that's the steering links, um, obviously built to correct size, short one on this side, long one on that side. Server server's built up, um, what else is there? Oh, and I've just put some power through it to get the direction right, because it was wrong. Uh, and I've opened the endpoints fully up, so this is what we have. And it's de decent-ish servo, it's a tactic sport servo, so it's, it's budget, but um, basically what I always use. Um, so yeah, that's... We don't have to worry about our steering anymore. Um, so next up now is to start building um, the front end, um, putting the uprights and stuff together. So let's bat on. Right, that's the front uprights made. It's a really good design, this chassis. Um, or it's a classic design, I should say. Whether it's good or not, it's open to debate. But uh, yeah, it's, it's very different to anything else. If you've never built an ORV chassis, no matter if it's a monster truck, a Subaru, a brat, frog, whatever, you really have to do. It's it's awesome. So these two big metal plastic blocks get screwed together with four bolts, um, and then you've got your um, your shaft, which just it actually it's, it's loose. It's just a big bolt that goes through it, and then you have this um, I don't know what you would call it wire hook, and that all attaches to the bumper. Anyway, next stage. I'll, if you don't know about it, it'll make sense in the next bit. So what's next? So now we've got to bolt these two to the front end of the chassis. Okay, so any of you guys have to deal with this. This is quite a regular thing for me. Right, Muffin, you're now a YouTube sensation. I'm gonna hashtag in this video, cute cat and all that stuff. This view is gonna go viral, Muffin. It's all because of you. Ah oh dear. And then she knocks bits off and stuff. Now I've got to bribe her with some treats to uh, get her out of the way. Anyway, just to quickly, what I've done. So the, the bottom arms are on. These metal brackets are now on the bumper. Steering linkage is connected. So there's just the top arms to connect. But why I just wanted to show you that is because the next step, um, this big bulky shock tower basically goes on the front. So it's going to cover it all up. So I'll get really muffin. Wow. Move, 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 move. So yeah, we'll get this on and then um, we'll see what to do after that and we'll get rid of the cat But in a nice way, right? So that's pretty much all that is actually the front end There's only the bumper to go on but that goes on later. So we're now up to stage 13 So we're gonna start building the gearbox um, I've never been a fan of this this thing here. I know I understand it keeps a, protects your electrics a little bit, but um, Yeah, I mean, it's a very open chassis there's a metal plate to go under there yet, yeah, but it's it is quite open to the elements, so I've never really understood. It doesn't act as a support, it's not bolted to the chassis. Um yeah, so I might end up taking that off to be honest. But that's it all bolted down. Steering is obviously in and working. So yeah, let's um, dig the gearbox parts out now. Right, so that's the gearbox put together. It's it's always a fiddly process. You need like three hands to do it. Um, it actually came with a pair of bearings for these nylon cups, um, which I was quite surprised at. I didn't think, I thought it'd be bushes. So um, yeah, I fitted those Tamiya bearings in either side, but I've also fitted the smaller bearings in the um, spur gear. 
where it takes one at either side so there's four bearings in that gearbox that's all it takes so next stage now is this um, gearbox protecting our bolts onto the bottom of it and then once that's on the whole thing gets bolted to the chassis right that's the gearbox on so as I said plastic cover bolts to the underneath of it and then two long bolts two short bolts through the sides of it um, all the gears are still sort of moving around you, you don't finalize the gearbox on this car until um, the drive shafts go in and the motor and what have you and it'll get then I can put some more but before the motor I'll put pour a lot more grease through there as well but yeah that's that's basically that um, I'll have to dig out the battery pin now and stop that flapping around that always does my head in um, so next up um, to, is now to make the rear drive shafts so it's the bog standard drive shaft that Tammy are doing now a little barrel goes through with the pin a little grub screw to locate it and then you've got to feed them through the gaiters got to cut those to size um, so we'll get all that but you're not going to see any of that because it gets hidden then um, once you've got it through um, set of bearings I'll sort of dig out and you drive cups through your rear arms and then at the end of that that all goes on in one piece um, and obviously these these move up and down for your suspension so what I'm going to do now is I'll get 16, 17 and 18 done um, because it's a little bit fiddly and it's like once it's all built you just kind of want to get it in the car or on the car I should say so um, oh sorry I'm just looking at something else while I was talking then it's the shocks after that and they're not adjustable it, um, it comes with the um, the piston rod itself comes with just a welded top so you, you, you don't have adjustable um, pistons to put in it that's a shame I was hoping to have a little mess with the, with the shocks on this Hmm. Okay, not to worry. It does come with soft oil, I'm noticing though, so that might help. Right, let's crack on. Right, so that's the back end on, um, the back arms. It, it's not it's not difficult to do, it's just you've got to make sure you get it right and get all the particular areas greased. Um, so yeah, all mounted on now. The rear suspension, how it works, is, is never the best. That's your movement there um, on either side. But you can feel as you're moving it, it's it's against the um, the dog bones. Um, so now I can finally, that's the first time I can kind of feel the gearbox. And uh, yeah, it feels great to be honest, the diff's fine. Um, the only thing I have done differently, I've put tight, the instruction, I'm quite surprised that's the instructions didn't ask to put drive um, tie wraps over the gaiters onto the cups. Um, that's what you did on the originals. Um, but unless I come to it later and it's it's right at the end, but I wouldn't have thought so. But yeah, it doesn't call for that. But um, I think you're way better off putting the tyre wraps on because it keeps uh, the gear hard up to the nylon cup. It just helps keep a little bit more dirt out. So uh, yeah, that is the car basically done. So the next stage now, what number are we on? So we're on number 19 now, which, to, it's to, which is to build the shocks up. I'll turn that round so you can see. So this is where we are. Um, oh, and you just make four of them as well. So they're uh, they're all the same size. Comes with some pretty neat gold springs actually. Well, two two gold. Oh, I'll have to separate them. Got a gold one there. That's pretty flash. I like that. Two gold, two silver. Should have done them all in gold. That's a nice effect. Right. Let's get the shocks built. Right. That's the shocks made. Um, so the rears have the longer gold springs. Feel great. I, I love yellow CVAs. Such a Tammy and nerd. This is obviously the only shocks we had back in the day. Um, I love them. I do. I love them. Unfortunately, they're not adjustable pistons, but um, we'll see how we go. So anyway, that's the rears. The fronts have to have a spacer on, and even with a large spacer, there's a little bit of play. But that spring's a lot softer on the front. But again, feels smooth enough. So, um, yeah, let's bang them on the, the car. Boom, shocks are on. And that doesn't half transfer the look of the, look of the car. Love it. Um, I'll have to lift the camera up a little bit. So the rears um, are, are really compressed already. But um, you get the idea of how that works. You kind of lose the feel of a damping. That you know, the system's not great. Now on the front, on all four, you had to put these big spacers in. 
um, obviously that's to limit its travel. Now on the Blackfoot, I took them out. In fact, on the last couple of Blackfoots I've had, I've taken them out so I've got more travel because it really does limit you. Now, I'll leave it as it is for now because I want to see it with the body on and what have you and, you know, sort of with the wheels on. But, um, yeah, I think I want more travel than that, to be honest. You do get, where was it? We get a second small spacer there, which is probably one third the size of the one that's on. Um, but again, we'll see, we'll see. Um, as I say, I want to end up taking this to the, uh, well, the first running video, I'll be a tarmac to set it up, then it'll go on to gravel. And then I want to get the Tammy Legends ramp out and just do some jumps, try to get some slow-mo. So um, I do want to catch the suspension working. And then obviously, if if it's successful and we don't break anything, when we're going to get it to the Tammy Legends arena. Um, anyway, well, that's something we'll look at. So next up is, just looking at instructions, we've got to get dig the bumper stuff out and the metal guard that goes underneath. So let's dig those pieces out. Right, the iconic big um, Tamiya monster truck bumper is on. I love that. I, I remember seeing it first time because obviously that was the bumper but the different, same design but the smaller one on the grasshopper and then the Hornet. And I always remember when the Blackfoot come out and I saw it, I was like, that's so cool. And obviously it just gives you the ability to when you, as a, as a lad, you know, dragging it around with bumper and stuff. <laughs> Memories there. Anyway, so that's on. Um, oh, and I've now fitted the uh, protective metal plate. And all that does is just protects the bottom of your servo and speed, or more so your servo. Um, so, next job is to get the motor assembly done. So, um, let's dig those parts out. Right, that's the motor in. A little bit of fiddling around. I got it the wrong way. It only fits in one way, so the pinion lines up with a spur. Um, so yeah, sports tuned in, looking pretty cool. What else is there? Um, the wiring's a little bit tight, but I, I knew it kind of would be. Obviously, you can mount the speedo here if you want, um, but yeah, it's fine. I won't tidy it up yet because we've got the the next stage is to put the um, rear body mounts on. There's a bit of a cage thing that goes on, so I might end up sort of just burying them under, keeping the motor wires out of the way. Or if that fails, I'll I'll go underneath, maybe like that, some something, and then I've just got to sort the orange brush uh, brushless wire out. I'll just. Tear that, uh, tie that out of the way some, somewhere. But I'll get, as I say, I'll get this um, rear body mount section on now and then we can tidy that wiring up and sort of finalise it. Right, that's the um, body mounts on. Obviously, um, the Monster Beetles to one either side and then the main one on the bonnet. So that's solid. Um, I did feed the wires through. And all I've done is just dropped a tire up there just to keep them in place. The orange one's here. I just took that down out of the way. But yeah, I've just done that to the receiver wires. So it looks quite tidy actually. I'm quite happy with that. So next up is step 30, which I need to dig out the actual large, I don't know what you'd call it. Um, it's not the motor guard because that of the the gearbox guard. It's that it attaches to that, and then there's a monster beetle decal that goes on it. Um, and in that same step, I've got to put the battery sides on as well. So um, yeah, let's get that done. And that's that section done. I've just uh, forgot to say in the last section that I put the outer bearings in, um, and that's the back bumper. So that has a big decal here. Um, I was, I was thinking whether to do some painting on that. I'll, I'll obviously in the next video when we come to paint the shell, I'll have a look at that. I don't know if it looks good in black or it, it's black as standard. But um, anyway, you're digressing. So um, that is the car actually done. So what I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'll dig the wheels out. I'll get the tires on them. We'll get the adapters sorted out, and we'll get the bearings in the front and get the wheels and tires on, and then. Um, we can oh do you know what no what we'll do is we'll power it up just to make sure everything's working right so i'm just having a little play making sure the battery fits and obviously we're, we're running on 2s now i have two different styles lost slightly different lengths of um lead pot let me just give you the other one 
So this is the one I normally use and the wires come out dead centre uh, and that fits almost everything. Not great on this chassis, obviously because of these battery um, keepers. So the wires that come out either side are better on this chassis. So luckily I have that battery as well. So I just thought of having a mess with the wiring because the battery wires are quite long but it kind of tucks down in there quite nicely. Um, I maybe I'm feeding those batteries wrong, the battery wires through wrong at the moment. I will check that, but right now that looks pretty good. Obviously, you've got a lot of ground clearance with this, so the wires are in no danger, and um, that's that's it's not touching anything. It's actually moving. So yeah, that fits there. So I'm just switch transmitter on. Switch. Yeah. Sounds like we're, we're good to go, so steering. I will have to set the end points obviously when I get the wheels and wheels on. And then um, give it a bit of throttle. Cool, so everything's going in the right direction. Um, I should have said earlier it comes with a a 10 tooth pinion to get any big opinions on these gearboxes you can buy um, a fancy aluminum aluminium adapter and a perspex cover goes on the other side i've had one before and it allows you to put um, big opinions on but again this particular truck and the black foot for me they should just run with standard i think they're fine at that so back to the wheels and tires boom she's done looking mighty fine as well um so a couple of things, I've, I've I took that large spacer out and I've put a smaller one in. I just didn't think there was enough movement. It doesn't make a massive amount of difference, but as you can see now, it's it's kind of got proper movement. Whereas before, that's that's fully compressed. You were probably put about there. So you know, only like four or five mil difference. But um, I just feel that makes all the difference. Um, rears. Rear shocks are actually great. Feel feel really really good. Um, so this is going to be difficult to show you with it not vibrating. I'll try pick the camera up so it doesn't vibrate because the rear shocks actually dampen. You see that? That's really nice. So obviously we can put. Um, spaces in the shocks to harden it up when we get it to the track but I think for every day even with the little ramp I'm gonna take out that's fine because that's got the full weight of the car in now it's got the battery in but front end is pretty terrible now the noise you're gonna hear of a, the, the cloak the, is that which is a little bit pants but um, yeah it doesn't seem to compress it, it, it is working but it's not nowhere near as as good as the front. But um, nevertheless, that's not bad at all. Um, let's just put some power. Let's put the transmitter on. Switch it on. And we go steering. It's pretty quick as well. I don't mind that. I'll have to set the end points, yeah. And then throttle. Ooh. Oh, well, that's the tyres blown in. That doesn't sound happy, did it? Uh, it's because, it's, yeah, that's because of the uh, the angle of the drive shafts dangling down. So that's pretty cool. I mean, again, we're only using sports tuned. It's. Uh, I'm just curious if it'll just give us a little bit more oomph, more so for the track, because um, you want a little bit of acceleration to get over the jumps, don't you, initially? Get a little bit there so we can get some uh, pictures all being well. Yeah, oh, I did the tow in as well. Funny enough, um, the, my my um, steering bars, steering rods were absolutely cock onto the manual, but um, when I come to fit them, it was, it, was, it was out on one side, so anyway, I've done that now. Monster Beetle, how cool is that? And it's done. Very enjoyable build. Built quite a lot of these, but um, 
I never get tired of building Tamiya kits or any RC kit for that matter. Um, just really enjoyable. Even doing the YouTube thing, you know, you, you you've got one eye on. Oh, I need to film this bit or whatever. But um, yeah, if you don't stress about that so much, it's it's really nice because you can just enjoy it as it goes together. And uh, as I say, it's uh, it's very therapeutic for me. Um, yeah, loved it. Probably took about probably close to five hours to put that together. Um, but obviously we did it properly and we did the electrics at the right time, so we don't have to go back to anything. What's well, that's what I normally do. Um, but as I say, I'm itching to get this finished so I can get it out. Um, yeah, very happy with it. Um, I'm really curious to see what it's going to go like. You know, I mean, when we stick it on tarmac just to have a quick run and that, you know, the they're pretty slow and what have you but if we can get on a dryish day and we can get on a loose surface because obviously now the temperature's dropping and it's damp all the dust and stuff that it would kick up normally and it looks cool in slow-mo with pictures and what have you it's just compact ground so not much fun but um, if we can get the right day we should be able to get some cool pictures and then as I say to the track which should be interesting so yeah that's it 2015 Monster Beetle, fully ball raced, sports tuned motor in there, see what difference that makes. Um, and that's about it, isn't it? Excellent. So, once again, um, massive thank you to your RC for sending me this, it's massively appreciated. Don't forget, if you're still watching this video, if you're interested in your RC and the website, go check them out and the um, link to their website and the promo code 5% discount code is in the description so um, get that used if you're buying so I'll end that video here I'll get cracking on the shell tomorrow but obviously we'll do that in a different video so guys once again thanks so much for watching it's really appreciated if you are new to this channel if you could please consider liking and subscribing to support us I had a little bit of spit come out of my mouth as I was saying that if I was professional you wouldn't see this I'd edit it out but I'm not Fat lad from Bradford with an iPhone. It is what it is. Happy RCing.